So I just want to start off like obviously we I want to talk about the film setting where we're going a little forward it's much forward from more from the planet of the apes and we're kind of going towards like the era of the 60s and 70s films right and but we're still having the look of the more modern films so I'm curious for both of you like when you were preparing for your role did you draw inspiration from the 60s and 70s movies or the more modern stuff or did you kind of steer clear of both to kind of do your own thing I think we're both heavily influenced just in regards as being fans. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and heavily influenced, especially in, in my case, by by Andy Serkis oh, yeah. and his, yeah. his like I grew up with his performances and you know so so Caesar obviously I've spent a, I've watched a lot we yeah. we both revere that trilogy. Yes. Um, yeah. But in terms of actually creating these characters for this movie, I think we both sort of we didn't study those previous movies or anything. We didn't like look to those to create these characters. Right. When you when you're an actor, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have these neurons in our brain called mirror neurons. Everybody yeah. has them, and some of them have more than others. And the thing is, when you watch somebody doing something, you're repeating. You're doing all the things that those people are doing, but in your brain. Mm -hmm. Right. When you have lots of mirror neurons, you don't want to watch those amazing those performances amazing, from those amazing yeah. films because then you're going to mimic. Yeah. Right. So I, we wanted to find uh, the truth, the most compelling truth for our characters. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Which is a separate thing from, you know, Caesar or any Cornelius yeah. or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We, yeah, and we're both overloaded with mirror neurons. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's interesting too because this film is like very heavily focused on like the legacy that Caesar leave behind, uh, leaves behind. And right. like it's, even though it's so far in the future, that legacy still continues on yeah. and his teachings. And obviously with your character Proximus, like you, your character takes his teachings in a completely different way than how he, inter uh, how Caesar meant it back in his time. And, you know, there's this book called Beyond Words, What Animals Think and Feel by Carl uh, Safina, where oh, he questions cool. the morality of, you know, keeping animals captive and hunting them. So for you, when you were playing uh, Proximus, like, how did you channel, like, the ideals of, you know, what his character was? And, like, how did that affect, like, the way you presented Proximus's teachings? Well, he's incredibly well read when it comes to human nature. Right. Okay. So, um, so sorry, you, you're off mic. Oh, mind, yeah. so sorry. sorry. <laughs> he's in, uh, he's incredibly well read uh, when it comes to, to to the history of humanity of Homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. He understands our nature. He understands where we were victorious. He understands where we failed. Right. Okay. Now. For him, it was uh, he 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 find, he kind of figured out that if there's ever another shift in the paradigm mm -hmm. of power, and if humans got power again, he is pretty sure that the whole teaching about apes and humans live together side by side has a lot of room for interpretation because he has read about zoos. He has read about laboratories where mm -hmm. they, he has read about poachers who would kill us for meat. Right. So, you know, is it twisted truth or is it just a valid interpretation? Because Raka has his, Raka's is, a, it, it's a little, it's a lot more sunshiny than, mm -hmm. than Caesar actually interpreted and, and mine might be a little bit more like kind of like we only have this much time before these humans take over again right yeah. and I like how that when you have that kind of conversation with your character mm. how you 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 when you start off in the movie like you're kind of unaware of like some of these teachings and yeah. like you don't really get to interact with what you know echoes mm -hmm. so like when you come out of that and you learn about some of what the world is like I love how you you kind of start to question yourself too and yeah. and for you like what is that like kind of going on this journey of with Noah like understanding like is there actually room for human and apes to coexist with one another Well that's the thing you know he's 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 learning all these different versions of history um you know between Raka and Proximus uh, and then his own clan, which which doesn't really acknowledge there being a history <laughs> with with echoes, yeah. you know, 
um, or with humans, rather. Uh, it's scary for Noah. He's got to make sense of, 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 uh, of all these things, and he doesn't know what's true and what's not. And I think, you know, there's a moment in the film where, where you've told me about cages and, and what humans once did and all that, and then he sees it firsthand finally. Mm -hmm. And and it's it's a it's a it's a it's a kind of small moment in the movie. It's it's one it's one little scene, but but it that's where it all goes. Oh, uh, you know, Pro Proximus is is right. <laughs> um, and 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 that gets him thinking. And and I think you know, that's 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 why he he ends up where he ends up at the end of the film, is he knows that that even though. Th th this is his adversary, you know, and and did terrible things to his people. He's he's he probably was was fighting for the right cause. But there's hope. That's the difference between him and Proximus. Is Noah has hope for for a future with humans. Right. Yeah, Proximus is like yeah, the, the humans are great. Um, put them up on a table and make them sing and dance for you and right. peel your grapes, but yeah. read you a book, sing you a song. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. but you know, you're not you're not gonna get the vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but Noah, you know, there's there's like an angel and a devil. There's Raka and there's Proximus, and mm -hmm. these two kind of he, he he's still he's got this this kind of compassion and this kind of empathy that, that lets him hope for a future with with right. with humanity so nice i mean i i really want to say thank you for taking the time to do this like see being in front of you guys like it's really made me feel like you guys like seeing your characters and hearing you the way you guys talk like i want to commend like your performances and so again thank you so much for taking the time i hope you guys have a great rest of the junket Thank you. Hey, Proximus says thank you. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs>